and then go to go Zelda Scattered Sword. Yeah. But the, there's me dying. Yeah, what is she saying? She said, Oh, you won the win, come here. And go Cer Ceremony? Ceremony. And go graduated to the summer class. Graduated to the senior class? And I can tell by that hundred night and handsome. Handsome night for your wearing. It looks very dashing on you. Very good, Ian. Once reading's getting get better. Closer to knighthood. Eh. Eh. <laughs> yeah. So Skyward Sword. <laughs> Doing great, bud. Autism in video games. Is it a good pastime or a bad idea? We've decided to address the positive side of video games when it comes to autism because we've noticed some very significant results from our sons playing these games. Now don't get me wrong, there are some strong negatives when it comes to video games for any child. One of those being a huge time suck if you aren't careful, another being overly violent video games. But I think most people have heard of, or at least experienced, the dark side of the medium. We rarely hear about the beneficial effects of video games. When talking about video games in this video, we won't address strictly educational games or learning apps. Those have very obvious benefits. We'll be discussing video games in the entertainment sense, but how can these be good at anything other than hobbyist distractions? Growing up in the 80s, the main argument I heard for video games was they improve hand-eye coordination, as if all of us were to become John Connors from the Terminator films, preparing for some inevitable World War III scenario. While World War III probably is inevitable, North Korea, it's a weak argument for video games at best. So we won't be throwing that one in the pile of positives. The positives we have noticed are things like Zelda games helping our son Ian to read. He was almost completely nonverbal until age four, using only a few key words in some sentences. We had little hope that he would speak in paragraphs, let alone read. While his schooling was the ultimate factor in helping Ian to read, one of the largest motivators for him was the Zelda franchise. Many people love these games but simultaneously criticize them for their general lack of voice talent. They started out being text-based adventures, and after Nintendo tried experimenting with voice actors, very bad voice actors, well, excuse me, they were turned off from that idea until very recently with the release of Zelda Breath of the Wild. But even that game is primarily text-based. While this is an out-of-date mechanic, it bodes very well for higher-functioning kids, like Ian, who want to make it through the game, but cannot progress unless they learn to read. It gives them a motivation. Ian will sit patiently in front of the screen, sounding out the words, asking me and his mom for help. It's a wonderful thing to see. Now, by no means am I saying that this replaces reading to your kids. It's just another tool in the tool belt. Beyond being motivated to read, video games present the risk-reward model. What am I talking about? Anyone who has experience with autism knows how impatient people with ASD can become when confronted with conflict. When our sons first tried games like Mario Galaxy or Super Mario 3D World, which send the player back to the checkpoint if they fail, we noticed them scream, fuss, and even cry. That doesn't sound like a positive outcome, but the nice thing about these games is that they present a simulated risk, not a real one. So it helps these kids take chances, learn from their mistakes, and reattempt until they get things right. After seeing Ian and Connor throw tantrums and throw controllers, and yeah, please spare us your Xbox Live jokes, we noticed the boys becoming more and more patient with the games. They kept at it and their patience in general has improved, not just with the games. They understand that in order to feel a sense of accomplishment, they need to struggle to get there. As Thomas Paine put it, that which we obtain too easily, we esteem too lightly. Anything of great worth takes time, energy, and occasional setbacks. Another positive we noticed is the idea of work ethic yielding rewards. What's that you say, work ethic in video games? Well yeah, you heard that right. Games like Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley teach that in order to enjoy the fruits of the harvest, we have to tend to the farm, do chores, budget finances, and so on. This is one positive we're still working on, as we noticed Ian eventually abandoning his chores on the farm to go on extended fishing trips at the lake. The good news is, this concept has taken hold in the real world, where Ian is consistently helping around the house and doing chores for money, as well as his brother, sometimes. We talk about this in one of our vlogs, so check out the link for more info. There is another positive that lends special credit to a game called Abzu. This little known title is more of an interactive experience than a traditional video game. It is calming in its pacing, color palette, and musical score. 
The brilliant thing about this game is how it soothes that so-called savage beast. Our kids can be screaming, crying, throwing fits, and even be in the early stages of a sensory meltdown, and then do a complete 180 when we turn this game on. It really gets them to a calm place, and it's easy to see why. This game is stress relief in a bottle, and I'd highly recommend it to those who suffer from high stress or sensory issues. There's just something so therapeutic about swimming along ocean wildlife, especially in the cool blue open waters. The last positive we want to address is creativity. There's a lot of games that help foster the creative side of little ones, but the two standouts we noticed are Mario Maker and, of course, Minecraft. Mario Maker is so adept in handling the transition from creating a level to playing a level. Its interface is simple enough for a child to understand, allowing for experimentation without getting bogged down in the mire of complexity and frustration. It helps kids not to take for granted the hard work it takes to develop art that's worthwhile. Anyone can make a level. Not everyone can make a level that's fluid, challenging, and fun. When it comes to Minecraft, this was actually a game I wanted my kids to avoid due to the stories I heard of it being an incredible time sponge. I noticed while on a work trip that one of the kids purchased this game on my Amazon account. Connor somehow got around my password, and when I returned, he was told in no uncertain terms never to download without permission again. The positive outcome from this story is Connor's creative streak. He loves building houses and designing structures. He also built a pig pen where he trapped cats and pigs, which is a little disturbing, but I'm willing to let creativity win out over Connor's failings as a pig slash cat farmer. It's like seeing a future architect at work when Connor designs his levels, and this extends into his playtime with Lego blocks, where his real world creations become more complex and more functional. It's also a window into Connor's mind. We get to see how he thinks and interprets his world via his creations, which I think is pretty neat stuff. So that's it for now. There are certainly many other positives of video games when it comes to autistic kids or any other kid for that matter. What are some of the positives you have noticed? What are some of your favorite games? Let us know in the comments section, and as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>